loop during using GarageBand and we're going to do it by using your MIDI keyboard. So first when you open up GarageBand you're going to want to select an empty project. Once GarageBand opens you have your electric piano is going to be your first instrument that you have here and you can play on your MIDI keyboard with your but so if you want you can go ahead and choose whatever instrument you want so let's say I want to use a mallet instrument and I want to use a vibraphone so you click on that and it'll change you into a vibraphone so you can go ahead and play and you have whatever instrument that you want to play so the main thing that you want to do first is record something so you can go ahead and click your little record button and I have the metronome on so it's going to count off for you and if you want as you you can wait as long as you want and you can play you stop it rewind and you can listen to it So you stop that. If you want, you can click and drag it all the way to the beginning so it starts right on time. Or so it starts right at the beginning. Um, and then if you don't like what you have, you can go ahead and click on what you have and then click just the delete button. And it'll get rid of it. So we're going to put our cursor all the way at the beginning. Um, also, when you're creating a loop, it's important that you stay in time. So we're going to go ahead and have a metronome on when we play something. Um, we're going to go ahead and record just a simple Soto pattern and create a loop out of it. So once you have just a simple thing like that, you can go ahead and stop it and you can go ahead and drag it to the beginning. You rewind and you can listen to what you have. So what you're going to do to create the loop is you're going to go right across and once you see that little half circle that looks like a rewind button almost but not, you're just going to click and drag and you can make it as long as you want and you can make as many loops out of it that you want. So now that when you play it, and it's going to play as many times as you want. But if you double click on it like this, you can see how accurate, how rhythmically accurate you were. So you can see that I didn't start my first pitch exactly on the first beat. So you can click and drag. Also, if you want this to be shorter, you can get your little cursor and click and drag to make it shorter. So you only want it that. Um, that is in time, but it's a little long, so we can make it go to only the beat. Um, this we can move to there, this we can put on the beat, and as you're doing that for your first loop here, it's going to do it for every loop that you have. Um, so if you want, you can drag this to be the full beat. Um, this you can make so it's only half the beat, so when you listen to it, it sounds like... Another cool thing you can do with the loops is if you don't like the pitch, say I wanted, I didn't want to play a C, but I wanted to play an A instead, I can drag it down to an A, and it'll do that for over here for this loop as well. So when you go all the way back to the beginning, it'll play it. It'll keep it the same thing every time. But say I actually want it to be that C, I can click and drag it back to that C that I had it. Um, so then moving on, if you like what you have, you can make the loop longer, you can make it shorter, um, you can make it any length that you want. We'll just keep it the 10 measures. We'll keep it the full 10 measures for right now. So you can have that looping, and if you want, you can add different. Um, different voices to it so you can add another layer if you wanted to make a piece so you can go to track you new track you click software instrument and you're going to create it goes back to your electric piano but we're going to keep the same instrument so we're going to go to vibraphone and you get to go ahead and play again and you have your vibraphone again so if you want to record something else you can do that while playing along or you can first trial and error so I'm going to play this and say I want to do something like this. So 
so hearing that, but I can also say I don't like that, it keeps playing, so I can play. But now that we ran out of loop, we can go back to the beginning and say I want to play something. So now that I know what I want to do, I can go back to the beginning and I can click record and I can play along with it. The other cool thing with loops is if you want, you can start it with just playing it once, like I did in my first one up here, but you can also play it twice and loop it twice, so the loop becomes longer and you don't have to loop as many times. Um, so I would stop that at the measure there. Um, so looking at this down here, I can say that wasn't on time, that one wasn't on time, that wasn't on time. We can drag it so it's all oh, drag it so it's all rhythmically accurate. And then we scroll over to the next time and make sure that is also rhythmically accurate. Ooh. There we go. And then we'll fix those two. So we've got them all and then the loop starts over. So now you go back to the beginning and you can hear them both together. So there we go, we have multiple loops that are working together. And if you don't like, if you want them to add up where they end together, you can do it that way too. So it would sound something like this. And it would just end and that could be the end of your piece. So in summary, that is how you make a loop and you can add multiple loops with each other to create a song.